Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. My name is Guy and I'm going to take you through things that make me irritated as a player. Now there are 15 things on my list that really get my goat and which all of them, as far as I'm concerned, shouldn't happen. So if you agree with me, hit the like button as you watch the video. If you really agree with me, or if it's happened to you, hit the subscribe button, and we will form a cult of people who hereby declare that the following things are irritating and should not be done by our fellow players or by our GMs. Number one. Players looking up rules during their turn. Your turn is not to look up your rules. Your turn is to tell us what your character does. Your turn is to engage with your fellow players in dialogue, based on what your character would say to the fellow characters. It is not to look up rules. If you are looking up rules, you should have done that when it was somebody else's turn. That's why the game is based on turns. And even if it isn't, even if it's a chaotic moment, you should know the rules for your character anyway. And if it's a rule that pertains to the whole table, or is it something that's very obscure and distinct, say, GM, what's your ruling on X? Okay, that's what I do. Or that's not what I do. And you move on. But to sit there paging for hours looking for... Now, how many uh, dice do I get back? How... how mm, mm, no... Mm. Here, sorry. <laughs> Players who look up rules just irritate me. They're almost as bad as number two. GMs who look up rules. I understand that we want the game to have as much grounding and fairness because everyone gets the same rule applied and that we use the same rule system so we all know where we stand. But on the other hand, if the character wants to do something and it's cool and your GM is sitting there and she's reading up after rule after rule, ru oh no, 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 it's not in that rule book. It's in that, it's in Pogo's Guide to Pogo Jumping. Oh no, no, that was second edition actually. It it's a waste of my life. Let's just move on. Make a decision. Let's move forward. It says Dungeon Master or Game Master or Storyteller or Narrator on your job title for a reason. Use your power. Just say, for now, this is how we're doing it. After the game, we'll check it up and move on. Number three, players not knowing what is going on. The player sits at the table and they check the phone, they think about life, they write stuff down, they read rule books on game systems that they're not playing, they look at the character sheet and draw pretty little pictures, and then the GM says, and what would you like to do? And they go, uh, what's going on? What's going on is what everybody else has been doing, except for you. Everyone else has been role-playing. You have been living on another fucking planet. Excuse my language, but that's what irritates me the most about my fellow players, is when we're all sitting there, I'm listening to the GM telling their story, and that person is sitting there somewhere completely else, and then they say, Oh, I'm sorry, what's going on? And then you have to start and tell them all over again. Oh. <coughs> Number four. DMs telling boring stories or pointless stories. This is a bit of a tricky one, I admit, and I have an entire YouTube channel based on trying to avoid telling boring and pointless stories. But a GM who just has something happen because, well, they didn't know of anything else to do, or because, well, that's what they thought would be interesting, that doesn't work for me. If you think your campaign is slowing down, don't just randomly throw something in it. Make the story change pace. Make it change direction. Yes, insert a giant banana if you must, but make sure that it's consistent. And don't just have, oh, there are rats in the cellar. Go kill the rats. Thank you. Here's your money. Oh, now there's wolves in the field. Go kill the wolves. It's not a video game. We're here to role play. Number five. DMs ignoring roles. I try and climb up onto the roof. Oh, 19. Ah, uh, you fail. But there's handhelds. I've got a rope and a grappling hook and a harness. Yeah, you fail. All right. Why do I fail? Uh, you just, you just fail. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I try and talk to someone. Um, make a charisma check? Yeah, all right, cool. Oh, natural 20. <laughs> no, you fail. Why? 
if you're going to ask for roles, make sure that the roles have ramification. If you're going to ask for roles and you don't want the character to go in that direction, don't just say, or make a role, I know you fail because the difficulty is 400 million thousand times higher than you could possibly roll. If you do not want the character to go in that particular direction, simply state, well, you look at the obstacle, thing, door, whatever, and it, uh, it looks impossible for you to go through. It's simply so well made, so slickly designed that you just have no idea how to do it. Maybe if you were 40 levels higher, but for now your character doesn't feel confident they could even, even attempt it. Done. Don't make me make a roll and then just tell me no flat out. Now to one of my favourite ones. Number... One, two, three, four, five, six. Number six. I should number these. Players who don't number their lists irritate me. Number six. Players who cheat. Why? Why do you need to cheat? I will not express my disdain or disappointment in you for cheating. You want to change your roles so that you succeed at everything. That's entirely up to you. In which case, why are you rolling? Why aren't you reading a comic book where the hero cannot fail unless it's one of those types of comics? Cheating is a complete and utter disrespect for everybody else at the table. If the GM cheats, if they change their numbers, if they fudge their numbers, for me, that's a different story. They're trying to tell a story and they're trying to keep you from dying by falling off your horse. Or from slipping and falling and dying as you collapse down a set of stairs. Or from that axe dealing lethal damage in its hit. They are trying to keep your sorry ass alive. But as a player, you have no agency to cheat whatsoever. You are part of that narrative, yes. You are part of the journey that the character is going on, yes. It is, however, not your responsibility to ensure that those values succeed or fail. That is simply the function of the Game Master. So when you change your numbers, you're taking away any agency that the Game Master has in order to control their story, and the rest of the players might not need to roll either. If you're just changing the numbers, why shouldn't they just change the numbers? So then you're completely debasing the entire game. This is me being calm about players cheating at an imaginary game. 7. Dungeon Masters not giving you any story, not moving the story forward. You stand in a room. What do you do? Can we leave the room? Uh, nope. No doors. Okay. Are there windows? Nope. Ceiling? Yes, it's a hundred foot above you. Can I climb up the walls? Nope. I search for secret doors, secret traps. No, oh, make a roll. Nope, you don't see any. Now what? Well, your character... Well, that's, that's, that's it. Well, can I... What, what should I do? I don't know. You're the one in the box, in the room. Dungeon masters who go, well, you failed your check to find the secret door, so your character now is going to basically starve to death in that escapeless room. That's your grand plan. That is what you think is an entertaining story. Oh, but my job's not to entertain, it's just to create scenarios, I hear the dungeon master say. Well, then your scenario was, I'm terribly sorry, awfully, awfully self-centered. Dungeon masters who don't have a story or who make stories that trap the players because the dungeon master is so bloody clever means that you should be writing a book so that you can show off your genius for the rest of us. Those of us who want to play a game and to actually discover a story rather than just be denied will continue to roleplay. Players talking out of character. Now, let me preface this point. If you are role-playing for social purposes, you and a bunch of mates get together once a month to talk about nonsense, drink beer, eat bad quality food or good quality food, and just talk about life and unwind whilst beating to death some poor innocent imaginary creatures, if that is what your role-playing experience is about, then that's fantastic. But if your role-playing experience is about getting together, creating characters, using a rule system, and trying to tell a story and trying to move forward, talking to me out of character about stuff that has nothing to do with the role-playing game whilst we're role-playing is on my list. Well, there it is, on my list of one of the most irritating things that people can do to me. I'm sitting there trying to figure out how to convince the Elvish ambassador not to go to war, and so-and-so over there goes, 
Oh, did you watch the new Avengers? Wasn't it cool the way that Wakanda did this? What does that have to what does that have to do with the situation at hand? The elves are about to engage in war. It has nothing to do with what's going on. That's my next point. Players not role playing. Again. If you are someone who is not an actor or a bad actor like myself, if you are not someone who likes to vocalize, if you are someone who is calm and collected and neutral, and for you telling us how your character acts is the best way to express yourself, that's fine. That's still role playing. Not role playing is where you go, oh, there's lots of orcs over there. And they're tough, are they? Ah, oh, run in. Why do you run in? That's suicide. Would you do that in real life? No, but we'll just kill the orcs. How? You d Mathematically, you don't have the values to do it. And it, your character wouldn't do it. Why would they do it? What's the motivation for them running into the middle of a... That's not role-playing. That's metering. We're not here to meta. We're here to role-play. At least that's what I thought we were here for. Apparently not. GM's telling it in a boring way. And by it, I mean story. I don't mind a GM who's not excitable, who doesn't do accents, but and who 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 is quiet and s s calm, as long as they're telling me an interesting story. But if for three hours we sit there and all that he can come up with is you waddle across a field, you walk across a plot pathway, you walk across a mountain, is it a dramatic mountain? Do we have to make mountaineering checks? No, you just walk across it. All right. And you carry on walking, and you walk, and you walk, and you walk, and you walk. I'll say, listen, Peter, would you kindly, kindly go and edit yourself down, all right? Because the rest of us actually want to get on with the story. We don't have to walk for 60,000 hours. Just go. You walk across plains, across mountains, and across fields, and arrive at Lake Town, or wherever it is that your GM is sending you. you if the GM just wants to plod out every single step they should let you know in advance so that you can avoid that game right oh this is one of my all of these are my pet peeves because they have no there's no reason for them to exist waiting for collecting dice oh um i'm gonna rock oh <laughs> no this is my this is my dice for for, for when I'm talking to elves. I'm going to use... Ah, uh, this is my dice for magic. Um, now, I've got it here. Um, no, that's for swords. Uh, no, that's for... Oh, no. Hang on. I've got to go and get my special dice for when I talk to men wearing three-cornered hats, which is very different from my dice when I talk to men wearing stovepipe hats. Or, would you please roll a d20? Okay. Oh, I've got 60 20s here. Which one do I choose? Um, I'm going to... Uh, uh, um, oh. What Was that your roll? No, no, no. This was just to see which one I'm going to roll. Oh. 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 oh I'm going to... You might have your favourite dice. You might want to have a dice for every occasion. That's fine, but select it before it's your turn so that the rest of us don't die of boredom whilst you deliberate as to which piece of plastic you randomly want to roll to create your uh, number. Players not talking or acting as a group. What do you think we should do about this elvish problem? Ah, uh, uh, okay. All right. Um, I think we should probably go and um, attack attack the elves. Yeah, you happy with that? No comment. All right. No feedback whatsoever. N why are you... What are you... What are you... You're here to just listen to the story. That's fine. Except when you attack the elves and then this individual goes... Told you we shouldn't have attacked the elves. No, you didn't. You never, you never, you never, you didn't actually say don't attack the elves. You never actually articulated. Oh, well, it was a stupid idea. Hmm. 
players who, after the fact, make stupid comments are one of the most irritating people at the table. That then leads to the next one. Players not planning. I hate it. Absolutely hate it as a DM when my players charge in. I hate it even more when I'm sitting at the table and I'm going, all right, guys, okay, so the elves are in that cave there. Do we know of the surround... Why are you charging in? We don't even know what's in the area around. How are we going to get them out once you get in? No, we'll just go kill them. It's fine. Okay, sure. We'll just go kill them. We'll just kill everything. Because why bother planning? All right, so we're trying to break into the castle. Yeah, you're just... You're going to disguise yourself as a washwoman. Do we know that the castle uses washwomen? Do we actually know that? Do we know what days they go into the castle? We can find this out. We can find this out. We can plan and do research before we attack. No, you want to just attack. Okay, good, 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 good. So if you're not a planning player, well, you might have very fast games that end very shortly, but... Uh, not for me. I like to have players who plan. I like to plan with my fellow players. That way when the plan goes wrong we can go, ha ha, we didn't see the fact that they only hire frog washerwoman. <clears throat> Non-decision makers. Now, this is a little bit of an incorrect term. Let me say analysis paralysis people, or anal paralysis people. People who go, alright, so we're going to go south. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. No. You you want to go north to the woods. All right. Yes. Yes. You raise a good point. We haven't investigated the woods yet. All right. So we're all going to the woods. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, no. You want to go east now. You don't want to go south anymore. I thought you wanted to go south. No. East is the way to go. Because, oh, that's right. We do have that side quest to the east. Fantastic. All right. So east. Yes. East. Yes. Myself. Actually, I, I'm... I think south is better, actually. Yes, south, yes, south, yes, south. No, but you said yes, but for, now you want to go east. Ah, right, yes, of course. So players who get stuck in these cycles of we're not taking a decision, we're going south. No, we're not, we're going north. No, we're not, we're going east. Whoever runs, I've seen this so many times at tables that, not that I've been playing at because this never happens, I'm too much of a bastard, but at tables where players get so frustrated with one another because no one is willing to say this is what we're doing and stuff you all if you don't come with me we've been spending an hour debating on which course of action to take and we have got nowhere by now the empress has taken over the entire planet and we are all her loyal subjects players get irritated with each other i get irritated with players when they just don't make a decision Someone has to hold a flag and say, this is it. This is our choice. And of course, then, my very last peeve in this very self-indulgent video, I will admit, but sometimes it's good to express. And I hope, I hope that you are sitting there going, yes, yes, I hate that too. I am not alone. Or you are sitting there going, right. So, 15 out of 15. Not bad. I passed, right? Full marks. I got everything on that list. I do everything. I do all of that. Yes. Again, this is what irritates me. So, if you are a perpetuator of one or many of these things, and your party, a real-life party, celebrates when you walk in, Oh, Ryan, come in, sit down. Not that I'm saying that Ryan's a bad role players. Ryan, come in and sit down. That's absolutely fantastic. Oh, Henry, absolutely wonderful. Come in and sit down. Oh, Barbara, look at you. You're looking smashing. Come in and sit down. Oh, Felicity, look at you. You look, God, you look awful. But come and sit down anyway. Tell us all about it. If that is the response that people have to you when you come in and you do a lot of these things on this list, then you're doing it right. Then you're doing it right. But I will never say those things to you if you do these things and you're arriving at the table. I'll actually be saying, oh, who freaking well told so-and-so that we're actually playing today? I thought we'd agreed that we were getting... No, we didn't, of course, because analysis, paralysis, vacillation, etc., etc., etc. So, my last point... All right, uh, would you roll a d20, please? Oh, yes, yes, I'll roll a d20. All right, uh, I got six. Yes, yes, you got six. If you are a first-time player, 
absolutely understandable. Completely understandable that you roll the wrong dice. These are very, very, very similar looking shaped dice. A d20 and a d12. And I've seen that happen often. Where people roll a d20 and a d12. It is difficult to see that this has a 12 on it and that this has a 20 on it. Especially if you pick it up and they've both got the same number on it, which is a 1. Yes, so if you pick them up and they've both got a 1 on, you could get confused. The triangle shape versus the five-cornered shape. Yes, very tricky. Oh, here's a triangular shape. Yes, so these two look very much... No, they don't. So if after your first session and someone says roll a d20 and you look down and you go, this one? Mm. <laughs> after your fourth session and they say roll a d20 and you pick up this one? I am a slow learner. I am. I admit it. And I irritate myself frequently. But the dice rolls? Dice rolls? Really? Really? Anyway. Oh, I feel better now. I feel like I've lifted a weight off of my chest. And I hope that this has been mildly entertaining, that you've agreed, that you've disagreed. Uh, what peeves you? What irritates you enough to want to swear on your own YouTube channel? I apologise for that. So, <clears throat> what irritates you about your fellow players at your table? That wasn't on my list. Let's see if we can add to that. Vent! Release your rage! Release your anger! You can call them, instead of calling them if their real name is Brian, call them Ryan so that they won't know who you're talking about. Let people not know your frustrations with them because that will help. Anyway, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest and hopefully not irritating game.